If you had told me five, six years ago that I would be doing this video, I'd have been calling you a bold face lie. It is crazy just how much things can change. And it is amazing just how much of a difference a character change made in the career of Roman Reigns, the trajectory of Roman Reigns, my interest and fandom, if you will, for Roman Reigns. He went from being a less charismatic Samoan Cena to being that dude, not just in WWE, but that dude in professional wrestling, period. He certainly has become the most must-see talent in WWE, being the focal point of the most captivating WWE story I think we've seen in quite some time. When you look at the number of people that have been elevated, the number of people that have been a part of this, the way the brand, the product revolves around Roman Reigns and the bloodline and all the story dynamics within the bloodline. It's been fantastic. And we actually have a champion that truly feels like a champion. Like when you see Roman Reigns walk out, He's got Paul Heyman in tow. He's got the bloodline there. Like you feel like that's the head motherfucker in charge. You actually feel like this is that dude. Just something that is rare to get in wrestling now. And he has been the champ since mid-2020, basically. So he's bad at the top for a while, knowing that we also live in an instant gratification society. You know, fans can grow weary bored, disinterested, want something new, constantly craving that fresh feeling. I compare it some, somewhat similarly to the NFL, right? And specifically the NFL draft. Doesn't matter how good or bad a team is, like you could be a fan of a team that went to the Super Bowl or won the Super Bowl and you still spend a couple of months thinking about that next wave of talent. You think about who's next. Sometimes even taking for granted the talent and skills of the players that you do have, thinking about the guys that you don't have that you want to have. You know, always looking for something new, always looking for something fresh. That That's a reality of our society, which brings us to Cody Rhodes, the former AEW executive vice president, now turned Royal Rumble winner, who since he has returned going back to WrestleMania last year, I give the WWE credit for this, they have presented him like he's a big deal. He, they have presented him like he is somebody to be taken seriously, that he is serious, that you should view him as being serious. You should take him serious. He is somebody you could look at and say he's a believable, credible challenger, challenger a timely challenger for the tribal chief, and the guy that should knock Roman Reigns off the pedestal, take those championships away at WrestleMania. However, I disagree, and I disagree vehemently. And I feel like Roman Reigns should beat Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania. Not only should he, he must. And there are a couple of key reasons why. And one of those is not because I hate Cody Rhodes. Let's address that bias right now. I am certainly not a big fan of Cody Rhodes. I do not like the lying piece of shit because he has always been full of shit. And he is back in WWE just like a few years ago I thought and predicted that he inevitably would be. But to say that I'm blinded by my hatred for him, for those of you that have watched me long enough, if you can't see the difference between how I talk about and view a Cody Rhodes compared to somebody like, let's say, <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! And that Memphis mid-card piece of crap! That I hate so much that even when his dad recently passed away, you'll notice I express zero sympathy for that. And this is cruel and harsh. The reason for that is because he birthed that Memphis mid-card piece of crap that broke 10,000 cars an hour and still can't draw a goddamn dime and still in 2023 is being forced down people's throats and fucking AEW. That's hatred. That is despising somebody. So you can F right off if you think that I view Cody Rhodes in the same light as that piece of crap. Give me a fucking break. But I do 
feel like there are some valid, legitimate reasons as to why Cody Rhodes should not be the guy to beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. The first of those. Roman's championship reign now is an all-timer in terms of length. But we're really close to more history being able to be made. We're so close to a thousand days with Roman Reigns as champion. Why bother ending it in the 900s? If you ended at WrestleMania, you didn't get to a thousand days. We might literally not in our lifetimes again see somebody have this long of a reign. The last time I've seen somebody have this long of a reign in WWE was when I was a little, little schleggy back in the 80s. And I was a little, little schleggy and I hardly remember a lot of that stuff. That was Hogan. That's how far back we're going. So for a lot of you that are younger than me, it literally hasn't happened in your lifetime. So historic in some ways. But if you go a little bit beyond a thousand days, there's Pedro Morales sitting there at a thousand and twenty-seven days. If you want to go a little bit further, there's Bruno San Martino's second championship reign, which went 1,237 days. If you really want to get ambitious and you want to put Roman's reign in the top three of all time in terms of length, you've got Hulk Hogan at 1,474. My point is the WWE has went this far. Why stop now? Business seems to be good for them. Why risk rocking the boat? Especially when you consider the thought process of them looking to sell this company for seven, eight, nine billion dollars. Is this the time you want to make a big change like that? And what do you do with Roman if he's not the champion anymore? The way his character is right now, the way it's presented, the way it's been so prominently featured, would his character be lost without the titles at this point? Would the show be lost? Would the brand be lost? without Roman as the champion and the predominant focal point of their presentation weekly? It's a valid question to ask. Well, we should also look at WWE's history and say, you have to be careful when you end a long streak that you do it in the right way. A good example of ending a long streak or a long reign correctly. Hulk Hogan, when he beat the Iron Sheik in January of 84, he carried that strap for 1,474 days. He went well over three years. That reign was ultimately ended by Andre the freaking Giant because of there being two Dave Hebners because of Ted DiBiase, the Billion Dollar Man shenanigans. And oh, by the way, when they did that in February of 88, 33 million people fucking watched that shit. And that was used to set up WrestleMania 4. And eventually would even lead to SummerSlam later that in 88. You took it off Hogan with the most credible, believable guy, still did some bullshit, made sure a shit ton of people saw it. That's an example of doing it right. But then you've got like CM Punk. He was a 434-day champion. You had his reign ended by The Rock at Royal Rumble 2013. Not only was Punk's reign kind of lame and mid-card and feeling, it was ended to be nothing more than a plot point for Rock and Cena at WrestleMania just so Cena could ultimately get his win back against The Rock. Bore fucking It didn't help Rock. It didn't help Cena. It certainly didn't help CM Punk. That was one way to not do it. But if you want to look at most relevant recent examples of how not to end a long reign or long streak, let's go back to WrestleMania 30 and Brock Lesnar ending The Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. Nobody can sit here with a straight face and tell me that that was a good idea or a good decision. No, it fucking wasn't. Brock Lesnar didn't need it. It didn't help him. It wasn't good for Taker. It didn't help him. It wasn't good for WWE. It didn't help them. When you make a decision like that, it needs to make everybody better off for it, not fucking worse. That's the standard you should be using here. And especially when you look a few years later... Taker lost one more time at WrestleMania. It was to Roman Reigns. It didn't mean nearly as much. You're going to say, well, that match sucked. Well, yes. However, it didn't need mean nearly as much for Roman Reigns to beat The Undertaker when there was no longer a streak attached to The Undertaker. Brock Lesnar didn't need it. He shouldn't have been the one to end the streak. To end the streak should have been somebody that was going to be that guy for the next decade on a full-time basis, not Brock Lesnar part-time basis. It should have been Roman Reigns. And they didn't do that. 
It was a negative impact for Roman. It was a negative impact for WWE. So when you look at Roman's title reign, it needs to be ended by that next dude. And no offense, but Cody Rhodes is not that dude. He's not that next dude. He's not that guy that you are going to build the company around for the next 8 to 10 years. Because I don't even know if Cody's going to wrestle for another 8 to 10 years. For Roman to go this long as champ, when you finally end it, you really want to maximize the return. You really want to get the maximum bang for your buck. And Cody winning that strap, don't fucking do that, period. And then we'll ultimately focus on Cody Rhodes and the Cody Rhodes character. His story is the chase. And even when you hear him reference it in some of his promos, so much of it's about the chase and wanting to get there, wanting to do something his daddy couldn't do and his half-brother couldn't do. But if he wins, where do you go from there? Will Cody be interesting enough to be a sustained champion? Because you can't have Cody Rhodes beat Roman Reigns, in my opinion, and then drop the strap in two or three months. That's fucking counterproductive and not helpful for anybody. Frankly, let's just assume for a moment you said, okay, we are going to have Cody win the, stra win the titles at WrestleMania. Okay, then who are those opponents lined up to face Cody Rhodes? Who do you even have position to be those guys that could take him on? Especially if you're trying to force and shove Cody Rhodes down everybody's throat as a baby face. It's not so easy, right? You'd almost have to be, if Cody be a short transitional champion to then drop it to another heel. Or you'd have to have him change and become a heel himself. And frankly, in my opinion, I think the Cody Rhodes character and story becomes much more interesting if he fails to win at WrestleMania. He could become a more sympathetic face that people could actually feel like they could connect with and get behind and you could have them do it later. It could lead to a ch character change that is going to benefit everybody. Cody Rhodes, the WWE. Cody winning here could feel too telegraphed and too forced to the point where you've already got enough fans that are thinking this should be Sami Zayn's spot. And then you sit there and go ahead with Cody Rhodes. You could, you could turn the crowd, turn the fans on Cody very, very quickly and not by design, but just out of your own sheer incompetence and stupidity. If the story is the chase, then you've got to be careful when you do the payoff. And the payoff is not right right now for Cody Rhodes. There's just not enough story there. Plus, again, talking about what would you do with Roman, there is still more mileage you could get with the bloodline as a group as a story revolving around protecting Roman's spot with the Universal Undisputed Heavyweight Championship. So if the WWE insists on going with Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania, so be it. I'll live. You will live too. But that doesn't mean it will be the right move or it will be a good decision for business. Because it won't be. The best thing for Roman Reigns' character and the bloodline and the, the characters within the bloodline story arc is for Roman to retain at WrestleMania. The best thing for Cody Rhodes' character is for Cody Rhodes to lose and Roman Reigns to win at WrestleMania. And the best thing for WWE and its product right now is for Roman Reigns to win and Cody Rhodes to lose at WrestleMania, period.